feel really good about that. Come on, somebody. <laughs> you know, I, for those of you that don't know, I'm just a boy from Illinois. I was a Baptist pastor, and then uh, through my friendship with Randy Clark, we got kind of uh, ambushed by the Holy Spirit in some vineyard meetings in his little Baptist church in southern Illinois. And we've been walking with the Spirit uh, and moving in this thing since March of of 1984, uh, but the Lord led me back to my hometown, Peoria, Illinois, and I. the last church that I actually pastored was a charismatic Mennonite church. <laughs> Y'all, I can see your faces. It's like, what? Charismatic Mennonites? But I did. I pastored an amazing charismatic Mennonite church, but I was also uh, began to be part of a group of pastors and leaders that would come together in the Peoria area. And we didn't come for any agenda except to minister to one another and seek the face of Jesus. We gathered every Wednesday at a Methodist church, and we had people from ev ev leaders from every church background that you can imagine, every, both not just white folks, but Hispanic and Asian and African American. And it ended up uh, where we went through in 2010 something called the Divine Experiment. And the divine experiment was basically this. What would it look like if we gave Jesus his church back? What if we all gathered together for 21 days? We closed down all of our programs in our churches except for our Sunday morning worship. And that we just met together to worship and pray and seek the face of God for our city. We had over, now this is in a town of about 100 thousand people we had over between four and seven hundred people that gathered together every night for 21 days in prayer and fasting and during that time the entire atmosphere of our city changed that the crime rate went down the uh, the drug crimes went down uh, the police got really bored while we were while we were doing this because the Lord was just moving so powerfully. And I'm telling you that it's the idea that we can actually lay down our our own personal religious agendas for a little bit so that Jesus can have His church back. I believe that's what Ecclesia is all about. So I celebrate you because I've been there. It's one of the most glorious things to do. So anyway. Hey, how many of you uh, came for our seminar? All right, everybody, look, look at me. Keep your hands waved. So if you have trauma today and you didn't come to the seminar, these are your people that you can come to at the end of the service because they got trained and imparted to bring healing to trauma. So this is your team, and I know we're going to have a ministry team up here at the end to, to receive prayer. But uh, I want to know, those of you that are at the seminar, how many of you slept better last night than you have in a while? Anybody? Look at that. Where's Rich? Rich? Where are you? Rich, come here. Come here. Come on. Come on. Rich came up to me, and he just had to give me a, This is just a, a testimony of something that the Lord did. Come on. Come on, man. Thank you. I wasn't prepared, but I'll try That's my best. Right. That's um, I guess a couple of weeks before COVID lockdown, um, I had lost some of my really closest friends in the gym who had heart attacks, and I went into immediate trauma. And then during, during COVID, I had lost 30 friends and acquaintance, family members during COVID. And um, through this time, it was trauma, everything that was on that board that he talked about, I, every emotion I had went through. And uh, I can tell you it's not a good place to be in. But um, I hadn't slept really good in, I don't know, five years. But Cindy Corman, you prayed, for, you stood alongside of me through that whole time. But um, I wanted to say this. I got, now I think I kind of chased you down a couple times, but we had a little time in the back room and he prayed for me. And I had never slept better in five years than I did last night. Come on. Jesus. Amen. And thank you. This, and... Uh, I can't tell you how much I love you, brother. I love you, man. Bless you. That's awesome. Praise God. Hallelujah. So that, that's for you, too. That's going to happen for you if you'll just let yourself be open. Uh, so first of all, um, so after uh, I, uh, okay, s stop, Mike. 
So I was in the pastorate for 35 years. Randy asked me to come and be part of Global Awakening as a director of education. And then in the midst of that, um, the Lord gave me an opportunity to pray for a military veteran who had PTSD. And I began to learn about God's heart for how he much, much desires to heal all trauma. And how many of you know that you and I have lived through certainly the last four years, one of the most traumatic seasons in, uh, in our lives. Could you have an agreement? How many of you know COVID epidemic was a very traumatic season for everybody? Because it wasn't just about the virus, but it was about the spirit of fear and death that came with it. And when we were required to isolate ourselves, Isolating yourself away from human contact is not only a symptom of unhealed trauma, but it actually exacerbates and makes unhealed trauma worse because how many of you know when you get by yourself and you're dealing with trauma, the enemy can come and just get you in the corner and continue to beat you up. How many of you know what I'm talking about? And unfortunately, let me just say this, uh, this church is one of the few that I know of that has always been a healing house in that this church is not afraid to deal with many of the things in people's lives that quite frankly, most churches in America are not willing to deal with. We like to be happy, happy, joy, joy, everything's good. We got our ticket punched to go to heaven and, we, and basically we let everybody else kind of suffer and act like, well, I'm just going to, you know, it's, anybody remember that poster of the cat that was hanging on by, you know, by the rope at the end, like we're hanging on by the, by the end of the rope. And I'm telling you, that is not the heart of Jesus for his church. It's not about hanging, just barely hanging by a thread until Jesus comes back. It's about being a church that's victorious, that's overcoming that indeed we're actually walking in a life where the devil is no longer stealing, killing, and destroying the dream of God, but instead we're living in the dream right here and now. And so it's a courageous thing for a church like this to invite me to come in and talk about trauma because quite frankly most people don't want to talk about trauma. They don't want to talk about it because... Much of the, I'm, I don't mean to be narrow on the church here, but I'm just going to say this. Much of us have bought the lie of our culture that if you have trauma or post-traumatic stress disorder, that number one, you'll never fully get over it. Number two, it's going to take years of counseling for you to get, get free of it. And many of us just keep stuffing it down on the inside. But how many of you know that when whatever you stuff down is eventually going to come out in some way? Is that right? 